Brian, before you do that, let's explain what's happening. The the tracks that we're going to hear are being played back from Andrew's uh, system in Calgary. So you'll see when I go to this four shot for the Facebook audience that the uh, QL1 has meters bouncing and that's where the tracks are being played. Brian is j merely controlling that console. So what we're hearing is really coming from Andrew, but Brian has full control of it. And because he's in the same Zoom meeting, he's able to hear what's going on. So uh, Brian, I'll, uh, I'll let you go right ahead and, uh, and show us that again. Just like that. Tune in to this week's episode of End Mindbenders. Thanks for doing this, guys. What's the job? Remotely control a Yamaha QL or CL digital audio console from anywhere in the world by using another CL or QL digital audio console. You son of a bitch! I'm in! How's it going? This is Jay with Kinetic, and I just wanted to jump in here and say a couple things before we got right back into the demo with Remotely Possible and Andy. First of all, I want to thank Andy Broughton for developing this piece of software. The ability to control a Yamaha CL or QL console from anywhere in the world with another Yamaha CL or QL console, it's pretty amazing, right? Also, thanks Andy for letting me be a part of the beta test team. It's been a really fun ride. Secondly, I'd like to thank the AV Educate team all the content you're watching in this video is directly from AV Educate. They host various live stream events showcasing AV technology, such as Andy's Remotely Possible. All of the staff at AV Educate, the men, the women there, they're all extremely knowledgeable and their goal is to give back to the community. So definitely check out AV Educate. Good people there, good stuff. You're gonna learn something, I promise. And with that, let's dive right back into the demo of Remotely Possible with Andy Broughton. Go ahead, Andrew, you have the floor. Uh, ooh, hold on, hold on. We don't hear Andrew, so maybe, uh, Brian, you're there, right? Yeah. Can you do something for us and help us out there? Sure. Check, check, check. can you guys hear me now? Can you can you hear it, uh, Brian? Have you got, got it under control there? Yep. Yeah. Whoa. Thanks for, uh, thanks for fixing that up, Brian. You're awesome. Okay, so hold on a second. What What just happened, it seemed like as Brian um, made some kind of adjustment and then it changed on Andy's side. And I'm a little confused as to what's going on. Can you guys fill us in on what's happening here? So yeah, Brian and I are uh, hooked up via Remotely Possible. He's in Savannah, I'm in Calgary, and he's controlling my mixer. My microphone's going through my mixer, so uh, anything Brian touches there will affect uh, will affect what you guys are hearing. And uh, so, yeah, that's that's how the system actually works. Um, at the moment, we also have, in addition to the uh, um, to my microphone, we have other tracks and things in there. But I just want to go back a step and just kind of thank everybody for for showing up. This has sort of uh, been a project of mine that uh, I started uh, when COVID hit. Didn't really know what to do with myself. Decided to get back into programming. And uh, was talking to my friend Brian. And Brian said, hey, would it be possible, do you think, is it even possible to try and connect two consoles over the internet? Like, uh, you know, I know you know how to do Yamaha stuff. Is there, a, is there a way that might work? And I said, well, I think it's remotely possible. <laughs> so kind of that's where the name was born. And uh, so we did some experimentation over a few months and discovered that, hey, this actually does work. And um, so we've, uh, we've uh, d worked on figuring out the best way to, to make this thing operate, working with uh, controlling one console from one location to another location, being bi-directional so that uh, two people could control uh, a single mix at the same time, two engineers on two consoles controlling one console. And you can also run it the other way so that one person can be watching what the other person is doing. So if you're in a training mode, something like that, let's say you're... You're, uh, you want to watch uh, somebody who's, who's working on a console, maybe they're having a little trouble, you can step in and, and give them a hand. Um, additionally, we figured out ways to, um, 
to be able to sync the two consoles together because that was another thing if you bring up your mixer it's not going to look the same as the other mixer until you until you synchronize those two um so i figured out a quick way to to be able to synchronize either the the current scene or um all of the scenes in in the console a lot faster than than norm than just taking the file and sending that file to the other person because the two consoles need to be synchronized to be able to figure out what's going on when we started this we thought oh i wonder if the latency is going to be too high it's not going to be really workable no not a problem really cool Mm -hmm. There's basically there is no function of the console that you can't you can't remote control. It basically, yeah, I mean, in, uh, Andy's being a little modest, but that what makes this very cool is that quite literally any function on a Yamaha console will will remote control. In fact, things that the the editor doesn't do. For instance, the editor doesn't give you the ability to turn on and off the oscillator, but you can with this method. There's several other things that the editor just doesn't do that you can't access remotely by any other means than this piece of software where you can control it from another console. Let's make sure, can you yep. do that again so that the Facebook audience gets to uh, gets to see that? Sure. Also. He's gonna lock the console, Brian's gonna lock my console from his end and uh, then he can unlock it again. So literally just about every function is, is available and he could change colors of the of the or change the screen brightness and a whole bunch of things that you would never be able to change within a scene um so there's a whole bunch of these kinds of functionalities that that are possible with the controlling across like that's, that that's so awesome again to note that when we did the synchronization um, we were syncing from a QL1 to a CL5 with a simple synchronization and everything that the QL1, all the parameters that the QL1 has synchronized to my console, anything that's not on a QL1, which is inputs past 32, mix bus is past 17, um, just simply goes to default uh Pro default settings on my console. So it, it doesn't really matter which console is which on each side, they all sync the same. Mm -hmm. And you notice, Brian, I just noticed the, uh, in your screen there that the, your iPad went to sleep. We didn't mention that the iPad could be connected at the same time, too. If you, This all works the same way as it would with a local console. So he's connected his iPad to his local console, and that still works. You don't, you don't have, it's not one or the other. They all can work together, the editor, the iPad, the, uh, uh, and, and the other console. And then Brian could send the, or anybody who's, who's operating the remotely possible software could do the mix to the, to the internet and the person, and you're sitting there listening to what's happening on the internet and getting a really better feel for uh, what it actually sounds like. We, we've ex been experimenting with my microphone and the idea that, Hey, you know, if this mic doesn't, I, I can't hear what my one microphone sounds like over zoom, but uh, Brian and everybody else can hear it. And if he decides that he needs to make a change, he can, he can change the EQ. He can uh, boost some low end if he wanted to. He can do whatever. And I don't. I can't hear the difference, but everybody in the audience can. So it's a great way to do a Zoom thing uh, or anything over the internet, anything where you're streaming, because now you're actually controlling the audio that the audience hears. And uh, I mean, Brian, while you're playing with his audio, uh, somebody asked to throw some reverb on him. Like, <laughs> so maybe. Yes, oh, now, it can now, make now, me sound more. Now I now ominous. I have to mix. I mean, come on. Now I have to. Mix. I don't know that we set up any effects, did we, Brian? I, I didn't set up anything ahead of time, so I'd actually have to to, to mix. Yeah, why don't you I, work on that while we're talking, answering other questions? Let's see if we can get a, get something. So uh, sounds a little better. Very true. Um, and then the other question is: This Mac only, or is it PC as well? Mac, PC, and Linux. Just for you, Bodie. Even runs on a Raspberry Pi. So here's an interesting thing: you can take the tunnel program put it on Raspberry Pi, and uh, you can send the Raspberry Pi to a person. Say, plug this in, turn it on, and it's, hey, here we go. Hey, now <laughs> I'm in the cage. Let's jump in here and one more thing. As an audio house in a rental house where I have several consoles in the shop, I can throw a Raspberry Pi in them all the same way people throw routers in the consoles and send them out. And now I can rent out all my consoles with Remotely Possible on it, software I've purchased from you, that's on there. Anybody I rent it to, they crack open the case, pop in the Raspberry Pi. I can remote in. Anybody else can roll in. That's just part of the rental kit. 
Uh, can a QL1, which has 32 channels, control the upper channels 33 through 72 on a CL5? And I didn't know the answer to that. No, so I thought, there's no, there's no access to it, so you couldn't yeah. do it. But you could do it on the editor. Yeah. You know, if you, if yeah, you had a, the, that, yeah, you can. That's the work the around. thing is you can run, you can run the editor, the CL editor, which can talk to the QL and talk to the CL. You can, you can run that editor and then access those higher channels that way. Yeah, and and you know, from a workflow standpoint, this was something that I I figured out a while ago. If I'm controlling a CL5 on the far end with a QL1 locally, you know, for most of the shows that I do, I have my I need absolute access to these right away all the time channels, and then I have my, you know, I need them to work, but I can access them with a DCA or I could run them off the editor or whatever. So I can basically kind of organize my channels so that my first 32 channels are the ones that I'm controlling with my QL1, which ends up being a really, really fancy MIDI controller um, and still control everything from 33 up with the editor. If I need to make tweaks or need to make changes, I can still control them with DCAs if I want to put them on a physical fader so it's still a, a situation that in many many cases would still work fine right Can so. I, oh. yeah go ahead justin sorry i was gonna step back i've been side projecting here uh i just remoted into a cl with editor with uh, ulxds connected and the answer is yes you do see the battery frequency uh and gain control amps in editor so wow Nice. So I'm guessing the answer for Andy and Brian is yes, it will. That's awesome. Just That's great. Man, that That's that near cool. near real time answer to a question is amazing. That's why we it's have great these to have kinds a panel of communities. Of researchers available to me at any moment is just look into this, everyone. And it's done. Thank you so much, Justin. So you can see a lot of uses for this sort of thing. The the idea, as I said before, of multiple people working on one project. I, I always thought of the idea as like, okay, I'm setting up something on stage. Hey, Brian, could you log into my console and just get the get the channel name set up for me or something while I do something else? Is that kind of functionality? The the ability to help somebody else. Um, there's a lot of a lot of ways you could use this. And you could you could be mixing a show from your from your room at another venue and then switch over and go to a different venue and, and look at what they're doing at, a, at that location. Brian, you said that, that there was a, you were thinking about the idea of, of you know, not, there not being quite enough text. Maybe one guy can, you could work on, on two different breakout rooms at once or something like that. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, or you, 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 if we think in terms of in, in the future, I think there's going to be, you know, live shows that, that you know, are a lot of breakout rooms as opposed to what we're used more used to, which is, you know, a big general session and a few breakout rooms. I think we're going to end up with, you know, 10 or 12 50 person breakout rooms that then we join all together into one general session and then unjoin, et cetera. Um, using this, this software, we're using this connection, you can have one kind of master control person who can log into and control any of those 10 or 12 consoles at a moment's notice to do uh, quality control, QC, setup. You know, maybe one of your techs doesn't know how to do 14 mix minuses simultaneously, and you can help walk them through that and literally do it on their console. And yet, even with, you know, COVID precautions, never go into their room. You don't even have to be in the same city. Yeah, yeah, training. I mean, boy, can you ever train, you know, do a lot of training? Somebody says, oh, I, I don't understand this. It doesn't sound quite right. Can you take a look at what I'm doing? The same way as you might go into somebody's computer and, and look at their screen and, you know, use their mouse and help them like that. Now you can do that directly on the mixing board. And you could That's also powerful. use it with just the editor. I mean, you don't have to have another mixing board, but it's really nice to be able to use faders and mix that way. But if you had a situation where you're going, hey, I just want to connect your to your... Um, uh, console using the editor just to see what's going on. You can do that as well, and and the tunneling system makes it makes it really um, really convenient because you just send them that file, they log it in, and it just works. <laughs> Usually, 